Or if it's okay, I can look at it and stand right here and read it to you, sir. I just wanted to refresh, give a calculator to refresh. Appreciate the need for accuracy. More than one, I think. Um, yeah, about four. To, to about three or four, I think. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, the, 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 um, Once I see that, I know that, that that's it. Yes, these are these are the statements. Those are the statements. Yes. So just refresh and if there's anything you need to add based on the statement, please do so. As it relates to me contacting uh, Mr. Gillard, on the the twentieth of Twenty of, of April, that's when Laundry came to me and told me that he called Andrew Gillard on his cell phone 626-2356 and reminded him to report to the CID headquarters in order that he, a confrontation can be held between him and one Leon Baldio. And Gillard told him that he was not coming anywhere. Like I said, I, I collected Gillard number from Corporal Landry. I called him and identified myself, told him the reason and importance of being of the matter, which is presently being investigated, and the reason why the confrontation has to be done, it has to be held between himself and Mr. Baldio. Gillard told me, and this is the words that I, I, I recorded, he don't care who I be, and he's not coming anywhere. As a result, like I said, myself and a party went to his home and looked for him and gave him a warrant. On the 8th of May, about 700 hours, I received a call on my cell phone, my number is 641-2477, from Andrew Gillard, uh, from phone number 672-7165, and he told me that he would be at the station for 0800 hours. About at 830 hours, one Lloyd Adams reported to the CID headquarters to facilitate a confrontation with Andrew Gillard. I checked in and around the compound. I also caused checks to be made by other person. For uh, Andrew Gillard, he was not found. About 9.05 the said day, Lloyd Adams left the CID headquarters because he said he had some business to take care of, but said we can call him anytime Gillard come to the station and he would return. About 10 hundred hours, on the said date, Gillard reported to the CID headquarters, Ivleria, and when I informed him that the person he was supposed to do the confrontation with just left, wait a couple minutes, I would call the person back. Gillard then said he is busy and cannot wait. So he would come back on the 9th at 10 o'clock if I could arrange for the man to come then. I told him that's okay and he left. On the 9th of May, about 1000 hours, I received a call from Gillard, cell phone, 672-7165. And he told me he was under the Benab at CID headquarters. I understand the Benab to be the, the building in front of the CID headquarters, just in front where we do the police clearance. Lloyd Adams was already at, the stage, at CID headquarters. As a result, I caused checks to be made for Gillard in and around the CID compound and the Benab specifically. But 
but he was not found. Lloyd Adam was rated at, at the station until 10.30 hours and said he had to leave because he had business, but indicating that the police could call him any time to return. About 10 to 5 hours, Gillard came into the office and reported to me. And I told him that the man was here. And if he could wait a couple minutes, I would call the man to come back. Or he, Gillard, can tell me when, when he can he will be available, he will come back to, to the station. Gillard then said, me not got time with this. I go into the media. With that, he walked out. As a result, I made an entry as to what transpired and later wrote a statement. On the 10th of May, about 900 hours, Gillard reported to the CID in an effort to conduct a confrontation between himself and Lloyd Adams. I made several calls to Lloyd Adams' phone, 664-3453, but got no answer, after which I went to Lot 168 James Street, Albaistown, the home of Lloyd Adams. There I contacted a male East Indian who said he's the father of Lloyd Adams, and I inquired from him, where is Lloyd Adams? And he said, he informed me that he went out, but he's not sure where he's gone. I made several checks in areas where I was told that Lloyd Adams would usually be, but I did not find him. About 11.55 hours, I received a call from Lloyd Adams, and he told me that he's on his way out of the country, and he will be back until next Friday. However, Lloyd Adams added that he's willing to assist the police in any way in relation to the allegation made by Andrew Gillard, but he is not willing to do any confrontation because he is an Indian man and he lives in Albaistown and Gillard's, Gillard does lie a lot and he likes to go to the media and that he can cause his, his life to be in danger. I think that's the extent of yeah, what, what I did, sir. So these are um, two statements that you wrote. Did, did you write any other statement? No, sir. No, sir. So the two statements, they are statements in relation to the confrontation. Yes, sir. All right. So you, you, you told us about the incident, the commotion yes, sir. with Imran Khan. Did you write a statement in relation to that? No, sir. I did not. Why? I. I don't think it was necessary since um, when I got to the CID headquarters, it basically was over, but he was still being in an aggressive manner, and I, I warned him. But the way he was, it, for, in my presence, I, I didn't see an offense committed, but because of what was reported, I realized I need to talk to him to desist or to get back to the stage that was reported to me. Um, as it relates to writing a statement, it wasn't necessary for me to provide a statement as it relates to that, because I, I didn't see that forming part of the investigation or taking the investigation from one point to the other. So that's a new, that's a new allegation altogether? Yes, sir. Um, the allegation as it relates to his behavior towards the policeman, that happened when I was not there. Yeah. That, like I said, when I got there, um, Sergeant Pitama reported what transpired. Corporal Benjamin would have reported what transpired between the two of them. He was still in an aggressive manner, but not to the extent that he committed an offense in my presence. So as a result, because of what was reported and his present attitude and, and his demeanor, I, I warned him to desist from that behavior. So he would not commit himself again. Uh, but tell me what exactly you said he was behaving, what exactly was he saying, what exactly was he doing when he was he, he was basically, as I got there, he was telling me that the policeman take the eyes and pass, he, things like that, in that manner. What was the tone? And he was in an aggressive, what I would consider aggressive tone of voice, and it shouldn't have been that way for, for a civilian. As a result, I, I, I told him, listen, I am here, I'm going to deal with whatever the situation is, let me 
get to um, find out exactly what happened. I'll talk to you in a minute. I put him to sit down at a, a chair available, and then I spoke to the ranks and tried to get everything sorted out and get things to, to happen in an orderly manner. We did not consider him being disorderly at the time. No, sir. He wasn't disorderly, but because of the tone he spoke in, I realized from the report I had that that he might get back to the stage. So that's what caused me to tell him to desist and let me take control of what is happening. Now tell me something, what constitutes this argument? You would have to be um, using a series of fox and scones. This, this, no, 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 um, no, 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 I understand at, at the station, sir, you would have to be aggressive towards the police, not adhering to instructions. Well, you said that's what you were doing. No, well, when I spoke to him, yeah. he adhered to what I told him, mm -hmm. to sit and let me take control of what is happening, let me find out what is happening. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm telling you that I don't see it fit for, him to, uh, for me to write a statement then because I didn't see the offense then. Accepting that, but tell me something. Why did he? Why did he comply with you and not the other policemen? I think um, I've known him prior to that. Okay. And I've never um, conducted myself in a. So you respect him. You have some respect. Yes. Uh, you have, you have you respect. respect him. So you say you know him.